Hello, this is Geo Techland, and today I'll be taking a look at the newest Raspberry Pi 4. The main thing I'm going to be looking at here is whether this device can be used as a daily driver, you know, uh, for light usage. I know this device is usually intended to be used more for learning to teach younger children how to program, but it's become powerful enough where you can even look at using it as your daily desktop. Obviously if you're a power user and you need a more powerful CPU and more RAM or if you do gaming then this device won't be for you. When I say daily driver for light usage I mean uh, something for the average person. Something that you know can be used something just to browse the web, check email, maybe do some light uh, office stuff. Most people these days don't need much in terms of power so you know, instead of buying something for hundreds of dollars, maybe this Raspberry Pi 4 can be a good choice for you. And that's what I'm going to be looking at today here. Um, just quickly, a couple changes um, to this Raspberry Pi 4 model is that it doesn't come with a regular HDMI slot. Now it comes with two micro HDMI ports. So just keep that in mind because that's one thing, you know, the average person doesn't have and like a cable to connect this so i had to actually go and, and, and buy one so with that out of the way let's get started all right so the first thing i want to test out is LibreOffice to see how quickly it boots up which is pretty fast and i'm gonna be playing around with it here and so in terms of the smoothness it does operate smooth for the most part although when i open or minimize and maximize the window it does have this slight lag there so that's one thing to note, very uh, minor thing. It's not really gonna impact usability too much. It feels like it's about the same as it loaded LibreOffice before on previous models that I've tested. Here you got a basic note taker, notepad. So again, one of the essentials, of course. Desktop preferences is pretty simple. I'm not really gonna mess around here too much. It's got VLC, which is very popular. Panel preferences. I do prefer the panel in the bottom. You know, most people, most average people will probably prefer it that way too. There are a lot of programming apps, so again, this is designed primarily to teach programming. You've got a clause mail client there, a couple games, you know, the basic task manager, 162 megabytes of RAM, not bad. Web browser, of course, you've got. Chromium on here. I personally prefer Firefox. I did see uh, a different version which I'll show you in a bit. And so the one interesting thing when I previously used um, like the Raspberry Pi Model 2, LibreOffice ran fine. Um, I never really had too many issues with it. But YouTube videos or just videos in general I think would not play even like at 1080p resolution. And for the average show watching videos on YouTube or you know something like PeerTube, I find that I think that's one of the the common things people use the web for. So that has to work pretty good, or else I wouldn't really consider this device a daily uh, driver material. I did notice some weird things while browsing the web sometimes, like sometimes pages wouldn't load. So some interesting anomalies here and there. Nothing though that would really affect the the use too much. So I'm gonna go to my channel, of course, and. Now's a good time to say, hey, y'all should subscribe to my channel. Now I do notice that when you switch from full screen to not full screen, there is some slight lag. And, and so I kind of wonder if that's more just like a software issue. The good thing is that I'll be testing this uh, Raspberry Pi 4 with other operating systems. So the next one I'll be using is the Manjaro um, OS here. Manjaro spin of, uh, for the Raspberry Pi. Now, I did have issues loading sound on this device. Um, part of it is the screen capture I use, but I'm happy to report that 1080p videos finally work and run smooth. So let me load this Linus Tech Tip Linux video just so you guys can see how smooth it does run. Again, I didn't capture any sound here, but um, you can kind of tell that it is running pretty smooth and it's not all choppy and stuff. So, what is my final assessment here? Can the Raspberry Pi 4 replace your daily computer? 
I say yes. Everything worked fine on this device, even on the Raspberry Pi Model 3, except for watching videos. 1080p videos just wouldn't work right. Um, even 720p videos wouldn't work that good. And now with this device, that seems to be working fine. And if this is gonna be a daily driver, light usage computer, watching videos in 1080p, I think it's one requirement in my view. Not everything is completely smooth as you guys can see. Um, it almost seems maximizing and minimizing is kind of laggy as you saw it in LibreOffice and in going to full screen on YouTube. Um, but overall, yes, this is a very affordable uh, computer that, you know, can be used as a daily driver for the average person that just needs something to access the web and email and maybe some um, light office suite use. And if you are giving it as a gift to someone, I would recommend getting the the full desktop uh, packet there because it comes with all the, the necessary cables and, you know, the micro SD card. I will be doing uh, more videos on the Raspberry Pi 4. There are a lot of other operating systems and the next one I want to try is the Manjaro version, the Manjaro of uh, Raspberry Pi OS and seeing if a different OS may help or hurt uh, performance on this device here. And so other than that, thank you guys for watching. If you like this video and want to see more, please subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to like, share, and I will see you guys next time.